Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church, and it is Tuesday. Time for our daily devotion. I want to invite you to come and join me for a few moments as we spend a little bit of time together, just in prayer, reading of Scripture and the devotion for today, some thoughts and contemplations, and uh, closing in prayer. So, as you join, if you want to leave a quick comment, that would be great. I would appreciate you doing that. It'll help me know who all is here today. In a few moments, I'll lead us in our opening prayer. Uh, today, we're also going to read out of Isaiah chapter 43, the first seven verses. So if you want to find that, I would appreciate it. I encourage you to take a moment to find that scripture. I'm going to look at the comments for a section, see who all uh, joins or leaves a comment, or if it says uh, who's watching, such as Linda Potter. Hi, Linda. Good morning to you. Linda's probably on her way home after the Tuesday morning Bible study. Hope it's a shorter trip than Sunday. Poor thing got caught in, caught in the traffic on 470 um, because of a brush fire. So, Luckily it's wet enough out there we don't have to worry about those things right at the moment. At the moment, Linda, it's you and me. Just you and I. Uh, we'll just keep watching, see what else happens. Again, we're going to be reading out of Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 7. If you're someone who's watching this later today, don't forget to leave a comment as well. Let me know you stopped by. I would appreciate you doing that. Based upon the fact it's just Linda and I at the moment, I'm going to guess that's probably going to be quite a few people today. <laughs> Which is just fine. These devotions are designed for you to be able to participate with us live or to watch whenever you have a moment to be able to watch, but hopefully just to give you a time each day to pause and reflect upon God's love and presence. So Linda, I'm going to say we go ahead and begin. Here's our prayer of illumination. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Isaiah 43, 1-7 Remember who created you, O Jacob, who shaped you, O Israel. See, you have nothing to fear. I who made you will take you back. I have chosen you, named you as my own. When you face stormy seas, I will be there with you, with endurance and calm. You will not be engulfed in raging rivers. If it seems like you're walking through fire with flames licking at your limbs, keep going. You won't be burned. Because I, the Eternal One, am your God, I am the Holy One of Israel, and I will save you. I have traded in nations to win you back, Egypt, Cush, and Seba, in exchange for your freedom. Because you are special to me and I love you, I gladly give up other peoples in exchange for you. They are trivial by comparison to your weighty significance. So don't be afraid. I am here. I will reunite you with your children. Bring them back from wherever in the world they are, east, west, north, or south. No place will be able to hold you when I demand your release, when I order them. Bring my children, my sons and daughters from far away. Bring the ones whom are called by my name, the ones I made, shaped, and created for my profound glory. Even though they fail and seem blind and deaf, and lack for eyes or ears, bring them out. 
read through for a saint. Hi, Barbara. Good morning to you. So our devotion writer today is Anne Stewart. Anne is from South Australia. Her focus verse is John chapter 8, verse 12. And in the Common English Bible, it reads this way. So Jesus spoke to the people again, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And here is Anne's devotion for today. She says, While walking along a beach where the bush meets the sand, I noticed a beautiful gum tree that had fallen. The tree continued to grow despite being battered by wind and weather. It remained beautiful with its papery soft white bark. And although some branches had died, new growth stretched toward the light. Like the tree, we are often battered and knocked down by the storms of life. However, like that tree, we can remain beautiful and strong in our brokenness. Through the storms that come our way, God can bring new growth into our lives. And as we trust God, our difficulties strengthen us and teach us. Even when we are broken, we can reach out to Jesus, the light of the world. As we endure our trials, we have the assurance that God has overcome the world and that nothing can separate us from God's love. Through our experiences, we become more understanding and compassionate toward others and their struggles. We also learn to draw closer to God and to rely on God in deeper ways than before. In Christ, we receive comfort, strength, hope, and new spiritual growth. So the thought for the day is, when I am surrounded by trouble, I will reach for the light of Christ. I've told this story before, but several years ago, Margaret and I had a chance to go to St. George, Utah. Uh, she had a show with what was called the Intermountain Farmers Association, IFA. And it was held there at the convention center. It was July, and man, it was hotter than Hades there at the time. It was like 100 degrees at nighttime. The um, air conditioning in the room of the little hotel we were staying in couldn't keep up. And we went to the uh, the Rite Aid, like CVS, and we bought a fan, and we had that fan blowing on us. And it was just miserable to be in there. But one of the things that we did while we were at St. George is we drove across the Indian Reservation in northern Arizona down to the Grand Canyon. And from there went to the North Rim. And, and as we're passing through the reservation on down to the North Rim, you pass through a lot of pine forest land that's on the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. There had been a wildfire that had gone through that area. I'm not sure exactly when, but you could see the remnants of it. One of, the, um, one of the pictures that I took was of a tree where the fire wind whipped around the tree in a spiral and literally cut out a spiral shape in the tree where the fire was and what it had consumed and what it had left in that moment. It was a fascinating picture. Um, I don't remember what happened to it, but I, it was one of my favorite pictures that I took. The interesting thing, though, is, is the whole forest had not been wiped out by the fire only segments and parts of it. And, and then you look down on the ground and you could see new little pine trees sprouting up everywhere on the forest floor. So it's, it's interesting that in the middle of devastation, there was also new growth. That the, the forest has the ability to reseed, replant, regerminate, whatever you want to do, whatever the technical term is it though, that it has the ability to bring new life even in the moments where there was death and destruction. And I think if you, if you look back across the landscape maybe of the years of your own life, you also will see the moments where fire has swept through and taken some things from you. Dreams, people, relationships, um, all kinds of things, possessions, all of that. And it's sometimes a literal fire that takes these things and sometimes the proverbial fire of just life, right? And yet, what many of us have found out is, is we've clung to something during those times and that, that thing that which we, we held on to as the solid bedrock has been our faith in the Lord, our faith in Christ Jesus as our Savior. The steadfast faithfulness of God who is loving and kind and ever-present and who makes that presence known through his son, Jesus, who came for each one of us. 
and that the Spirit speaks into our souls, even when we, we feel like there's nothing left. We hear the whisper of God in our ears through our soul. And it reminds us that we are loved. And if we simply just reach out, God is there to take our hand and to lead and to guide. Sometimes in the darkness of that destruction, it's hard for us to see. It's hard for us to reach out. It's hard for us to be able to determine where the hand of God even is, maybe, so that we could grasp it or be grasped by it. But I think it's still just simple enough for us to understand and hold on to as true that all we have to do is stretch out our hand and that God will grant us comfort, strength, hope, new spiritual growth, understanding. God will deliver us from these storms in our lives and that God will ultimately surround us with the light of Christ. Sometimes, though, it, it seems like it's impossible for us to do that, to even reach out our hands because we're grasping for all the things around us, not the things above us. And so I want to ask you just to think about, if you find yourself in the middle of one of these storms of life, one of these fires that's raging around you, can you pause? In all the anxiousness that you're feeling in the moment, can you pause? I heard this morning on an ad that one of the best things to do is to breathe in for four seconds and to breathe out for six seconds. A count of four in, a count of six out. That clears, it brings clarity, it brings some calm to us, and it allows us to be able to maybe center in that moment a little bit more. You know, rather than the frantic kind of chasing our tails around and grasping for things around us. If we find that moment where we can pause, I think then we can also be reminded that we simply need to reach upward. Reach upward for God to take our hand reach upward towards the light that is God that is present in the world towards us and know that in those moments, God will deliver us. So I hope you have an opportunity today, if you need to, to reach up so that you might take the hand of God and experience God's light in your life. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So gracious God, as we reach out to you in our struggles, heal our hearts, bind our wounds, and work all things together for your good. In Christ we pray. Amen. Well, wonderful. Great. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Privilege, as always, to spend some time in devotion with you, and I'll look forward to doing the same tomorrow. So come and join me, if you would, please. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of this Tuesday. Again, if you're someone who watches this a little later, don't forget, leave a quick comment. Let me know you stopped by. Feel free to share this on your own Facebook page. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. God's rich grace and peace be upon you. Thanks, friends.